Hey guys, Kyle here. So, just before the show starts, I wanted to mention our Patreon. You can pay us $1 a month as a thank you, as a tip. You can pay $2 a month to get access to one of our bonus content shows, uh, episodes two days early, and a secret Discord chat where all of our Patreon donors get to go and hang out and talk with us directly. Then there's a $5 tier that you can donate to to get access to a whole bunch more content. Uh, we have multiple bonus episodes on there. So please check it out, patreon.com slash it gets weird. Uh, we don't advertise, we don't make money. So check it out and throw some money if you think that would be cool. Thanks. Welcome to It Gets Weird, our comedy show where we explore the unusual, the unbelievable, and the unexplained to try to make your world a little weirder. I'm Niall. And I'm Kyle. And we have had an absolutely insane week, a couple weeks, of UFO-related stuff. That um, is true, yes. But the one that I really want to kick this episode off with... Uh, Please tell me it's the thing you sent me on Twitter. It, it is the thing I sent you on Twitter. I want to talk about this. Okay, um, yeah, let's go. So, if you haven't heard out there, folks... Um, new lore just dropped. New lore just dropped. Not the podcast. Um, oh, true. But <laughs> if you're not if you're not on twi UFO Twitter, um, let, let me enlighten everybody to some, some interesting stuff. Um... Yuri Geller, who has come up on this show before, uh, Israeli, he, he thinks he, he claims to be a psychic. Um, he like he's infamous for the spoon bending thing. And but he's also, I think, infamous for uh, like a, a, a debunker, like showing maybe was it like um, Penn and Teller or something like that? I think it might have been. It was it was someone like that. Somebody like very publicly sort of like showed how he was able to do one of his tricks. Um, and they were able to like, if I'm remembering the story correctly, they were able to mimic his, his uh, psychic abilities on, on television. Um, so, so that's Yuri Geller. And I, you know, I'd known that he had had some UFO and alien related stuff in his past and, you know, he's he's not divorced from the phenomenon. He's not just like, you know, it, when, when you're in woo, like somebody like Yuri Geller is, I think you're probably open to just about all of it. Um, suffice to say, he dropped a fucking bombshell on oh, man. the UFO community the other day in conjunction, according to him, while he is working with uh, Whitley Strieber who wrote... Who we've also talked about. We, we've definitely talked about Whitley Strieber, uh, author of Communion. There are a whole... Like, I think we have to do an episode on Whitley Strieber at some point, but but yeah. they've come up. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll just I'll just read what Yuri Geller had to say. He, he has a yeah, photo. Please. He has a photo that he posted on Twitter. Um, and here's what he says about it. <clears throat> My dear friends, I received this image from my friend Whitley Strieber, Communion, The Hunger, Wolfen, and Alien Abduction. Whitley said that this image is probably real. It is also one of the beings that he sees and have seen and been with. <laughs> uh, he thinks it is real because of two things. The prominent vagina is immediately evident when you see them naked. But and you it can stop there for a second because <laughs> this is... The the thing that you have to realize about this tweet is that the picture that he posted with this specific tweet only goes down to like where the nips would be. No, no. So then you, you he can, had you to can, no, he had to follow oh, up right, the, in right. the second tweet <laughs> with the full picture. Yes, you're right. He he. I don't know if he messed up or whatever, but you have to then click into the thread to get the picture where. Maybe if you squint a little bit, there might be some gray alien pussy involved. I See, honestly, uh, I thought Twitter was was cropping out the the alien pussy. Um, but you're right. He Elon he like, has some oh. very specific uh, filtering methods. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you see the 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 very real images of a nude uh, alien undercarriage. Now, I, I do want to ask you, Niall, since yes. you have seen the um the alien 
pussy pic, which, you know, first of all, this is sort of like a feminist win since we're talking about feminist pics as opposed or uh, uh, pussy pics instead of, you know, like a dick pic. So one feminist win by Yuri Geller and, and Whitley Strieber here. But two, um, I, I, I do want to ask you because because we've okay. both seen the photo. Um, well, first of all, I think I think maybe Yuri Geller meant like labia, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I just 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 to you know maybe. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that may makes need a little to, more or, sense. Or Yuri Geller may need to go back and and look through that diagram once or twice again to figure out what he's talking about. Because <laughs> uh, like I I'll just say it I don't I don't know what like it is a, a somewhat wrinkly skinned alien. Is it? But I mean, there, there's like at the joints and stuff. There's like folds and a little bit, but like. I don't see the 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 genitalia in question. Yeah, I mean, you know? it's it's a very dog shit photo. I mean, like you can't have a photo of an alien without it being completely dog shit. Um, uh, you know, I, I I've never seen non blurry images of like cryptids and, and and aliens and stuff. So all um, all I'm saying is this picture did nothing for me. Yeah, no. I, I like uh, I was hoping when I read that tweet, I was like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. Finally something new. <laughs> Finally something interesting. Uh, <laughs> and it was nothing. Yeah, nothing I had I haven't my... seen much I've seen much worse alien porn <laughs> on on various other places. I had my zipper halfway down when I scrolled down to see the full picture and I immediately zipped back up and I was like, this isn't gonna cut it, Yuri. Um, I want to see some better details here or else what, what am I going to do? I, uh, <laughs> someone, <laughs> we need someone to do fucking like a photo manipulation to try to bring out the crispness of this, like supposed alien vagina. That's, yeah. I think we need, we need people to take this photo from Yuri Geller's Twitter and run it through all of your enhanced software, um, to try to like, you know, mess with the contrast, maybe see if you can like. Uh, reverse the polarity of the like the the lighting in the photo to figure out like the the exact you know and what I'm saying is you all you know what I'm talking about yeah, well, do all of your wizardry to give us the most uh, crisp clean image of this this new earth shattering revelation in alien biology that we had no idea about see beforehand. Uh, see I I think what you're describing is the actual first good positive use case of AI um because people have been using that technology, yeah. you know, to like uh, do how, a bunch of stupid you, bullshit. Look, what? I, I know this isn't quite AI, but how, what do you think a content aware uh, like filtering on Photoshop? You know that thing where it tries to like yes that that magic whatever yeah. brush that they they call, they claim. What do you think that would do to this fucking photo? I think two two uh, content aware degrees would turn it into just a muddy mess of. You, you wouldn't be able to tell what it is. I think. Okay. Um, I, I I do think that finally we can we can get AI the AI heads of, of the world cooking on something really really important this time. Um, yeah. Instead of trying to like just destroy creative creative jobs and like the any entertainment industry, maybe you can just try to crispen up some pics of alien please. genitals. Like yeah. I think that's honestly a better use for AI. Seriously, we cracked it. We saved the world. Uh, the strikes can be over because they don't need AI anymore. We figured it out. Crack open those AI algorithms so we can crack open some extraterrestrial pussy. Um, here's and now we're not allowed to say that word okay. at all yeah, again for the rest of this episode. Um, l- let me just finish a little bit more of what he says because oh yeah, this I is did cut you off. This is like so he says. Uh, he thinks it is real because of two things. The prominent vagina is immediately evident when you see them naked, but it is not commented on in the UFO literature because very few people actually see them, especially not naked. Secondly, they reproduce in a manner very different from us. So why would they need a vagina? I mean, um, you can still, you can do different things with one of those. I don't I mean, You can do. <laughs> it's, well, okay. You don't have to just go P and V. Like there's, there's other things you can do. But uh, okay, whatever. I think it was a valid question. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, what Look, you've wor- seen what Cronenberg does with those things. That's true. Come on. I, I'm just saying, like, if 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 they reproduce differently, why would they have a vagina? You know, like, I, I, that's all I'm saying is like, isn't yeah, that like it, it's just I feel like, you know, it's sort of maybe a human projection um, to, to say that what whatever. Um uh, he goes on to say, what in the world she's doing in a basement of an abandoned building in Mexico? I cannot imagine. How does he know this isn't 
a man. I I don't know. Look, I I mean, here's the thing. If if somehow aliens come down to Earth and have a binary strict concept of gender, I'll be very surprised. I'll eat my hat. That's that's just not like that is an Earth concept that we have taken out. Fucking it's probably not going to extend to the stars. So Yuri Geller, uh, get get. (laughs) What I really <laughs> your gender shit. Out what I really world. like about this too is he basically is just like, well, the reason that she was caught, you know, in this photo was, you know, she was probably going up to to use the bathroom. She was trying to take a piss, yeah. and a night watchman caught her. Um, and uh, yeah, Whitley believes that this image may be authentic. The primary reason is that the genitalia are true to life. So, um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, th- really cool stuff going on so in UFO. Does this make Whitley Strieber the leading expert on a- on gray genitalia? Considering uh, he's the one that's like that's confirming all of this stuff and and talking about how this is a thing that most isn't in the literature. I think I think that makes Whitley Strieber the preeminent expert on uh, alien vagina. I I would have said yes, except for the fact that there are abductees and contactees who have made the claim that they have been, uh, you know, in had, had intercourse with aliens. So, you know, hands-on experience versus, you know, photo analysis, you know, if we could sort of combine the two, but they're the ones he meets though. So he's met them in person and he doesn't like, I'll just say this. I think, I think we can say this with pretty, pretty big certainty. Okay. Having sex doesn't automatically make you experts on vaginas. Well, that's, that's definitely true. (laughs) Uh, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's fair. Okay. So I guess, yeah. yeah, Whitley Strieber is the expert on, uh, alien genitalia. So now here's, here's what I'm looking for. Uh, mm-hmm. they got to produce a photo of an alien with its dick and balls out. I think it's only fair. I mean, again, like I said, it's good that we're, you know, doing vagina pics, uh, instead of uh, dick pics here, but I think I think we should, if, if the, for research purposes, we got to get the alien with the dick and balls out. Um, and sure. uh, yeah, there's no vagina on this thing, not visibly. I, can't like, find I don't it understand at all. why like, he's saying. I mean, I've stared at this thing. <laughs> it's it's the fact that he opens with like it's so obvious. Like it's, <laughs> it, 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 we can tell it's real because of the obvious vagina, and it's like it's but there's it's there isn't. I don't I don't see anything. Yeah, Yuri. I just don't, I don't. So please point it. Maybe can can we re, can we reply? Hey, people yeah. that listen to this podcast, reply to Yuri Geller and say, uh, can you circle the the Here. vagina on this picture? I'll do that right now. Okay, uh, could because I'm having trouble you seeing it. Please circle the vagina in this picture. I'm having trouble seeing it. Kisses. Signed Kyle. Cool. Thank you. That that honestly, like we'll 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 check back in with that by the end of the show and see if uh Yuri has answered our request uh and, and maybe we'll have some breaking news for all cool. of our, that would our, be great. our loyal listeners. In the meantime, <clears throat> yeah. Oh shit. Uh I wanna take us to an entirely different just topic area of interest, just everything. Because if you must. I I I didn't if you if you are this may surprise you, but I didn't do an episode on whether or not pictures have alien genitals in them. That that was not really the topic that I had planned for today. So um, today, Kyle, I'm I am this is this is a little unusual. I don't normally do two of these in a row, but I kind of went down a rabbit hole, and um, I want to talk about a haunted hotel in Arizona. Mm. Okay, interesting. You know what is supposedly the most haunted location in Arizona. So. Hmm. Hotels are very good uh, locations for hauntings. I mean, if if you know, The Shining kind of proved that uh, pretty mm-hmm. definitively. But like, even before The Shining, I feel like people probably were walking up and down hotels. You know, just like left and right, up and down, yeah, all over the place. Yeah, floor two, floor three, floor four, so on. Uh, you know, going, damn, this place looks like it could be haunted. I mean, you think about how many people pass through those places. Surely some people have died there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you always see hotel halls. You you go, maybe you go on Reddit and you go to the r slash liminal spaces uh, 
hashtag uh, subreddit, I think they're called, or you go to Tumblr and you, you go look up hashtag liminal spaces because that's what you're about. Or maybe you're into the back rooms and you see lo- there will be inevitably a photo of a hotel hallway. And, uh, and and that's one of those the few times that people posting on those places are actually posting a true liminal space. Do you remember? There's like, I don't know if this is still a thing, but there was a time when liminal space started to get really popular and people were just like posting pictures of like grocery stores. Like, <laughs> like they were just posting the most yeah. normal ass locations that aren't really limit. Like they would post like their bedroom. Yeah. And that's not a liminal it, space. That is the antithetical. That is, I, that I is do, antithetical to that concept. I, I do think people took the idea of liminal and just said, well, this applies to anything that gives me weird vibes. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like how meme went from like a very specific type of internet photo to any 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 funny picture online is a meme. Uh, any any picture online is a meme, basically. Yeah, it doesn't even um, have to be funny. <clears throat> yeah, so. So, Kyle, I want to talk today about the Hotel Monte Vista. Monte okay, Vista. I, I don't know why I said it like that. That doesn't, that's not wait, how I talk. you said this is in Arizona? Yes. I'm, where in Arizona? Flagstaff. Flagstaff. How far is that from Phoenix? Uh, I honestly don't know. I didn't really think to check. <laughs> I might, I might go and look because, uh, I do have a, a trip to, uh, Phoenix coming up real soon and I haven't actually booked my hotel. So, um, maybe, maybe so, I could stay at the haunted hotel. I mean, supposedly it's, um, it, it's, it gets kind of back and forth reviews. Uh, it, it doesn't seem super expensive, but, and, and it, it's like they remodeled in 2018, so it's not like the worst place to stay. So like, but there were some bad reviews, not like bugs, but just like uh, it being, you know, it's it's a building from the 1920s. So sometimes oh, okay. the lights are a little iffy and, and uh, radiators. And Maybe shit. not where I want to stay for an extended stay. Yeah, like spending a night there would be fun, especially if you can get in one of the rooms that's supposedly haunted, but I don't think you want to live there for two weeks. So, yeah, fair enough. Anyway, so the Hotel Monte Vista has kind of a storied history uh, and is seemingly kind of filled with ghosts. We got kind of chock-a-block full of ghosts here, which is is fun because there's a lot of different little stories and stuff contained inside this, this place's history. But first I want to talk about the hotel itself before we get to the ghosts, because we got to set the stage, right? Sure. If you, if you think we have to, I, I think we do. So <laughs> this, this hotel exists basically because of tourism created by route 66. Um, oh, it was, uh, it, it opened, um, finally completed opening in 1927. However, they, the city uh, actually started all of the process of getting this hotel going in 1924. The thing that's interesting about this hotel from its inception was that it was a community-owned hotel. Um, they raised money by taxes and by uh, just, like, fundraising in the city to make a fully, like, um, a fully community-owned hotel in this town that was kind of starting to flourish as Route 66 brought people out onto tourism and, and just traveling across uh, the United States. Um, and so that this this area decided to capitalize on that and build this nice hotel for people to stay in. Um, they raised over $200,000 in over the course of one month to start the construction. Um, and it sits near uh, a nearby railroad station that also kind of brings in people along with the actual Route 66 uh, and th- this um, uh, this just led to a lot of travelers coming through and staying here. It was it was originally called the Community Hotel because of its origins, the fact that it was built by the community, um, and it started out as a 76 room, two story lounge uh, building with a post office and even at one point a newspaper headquarters that was. Uh, in reality, a front for a speakeasy during Prohibition, Ooh, which we'll get more into in a little bit. Very nice. That's always fun. Now, a- a- am I understanding that? Because Route 66, is this the famous Route 66 that we've covered on this show? Yeah. 
Um, so, I think that this actually predates. I think Route 66 came a little later. Okay. It, Route 66 ended up here, but tourism was brought by the railroads and everything. I think I misspoke on that, but it, oh, it okay. was because I think Route 66 came a little later, but it is very close to that. So gotcha. Uh, that that especially helped uh, as we progressed because this became um, a place for a lot of westerns to be shot in the 40s and 50s. So it, it became like a kind of a Hollywood destination as well. Um, but the community hotel, as it was called at the time, uh, became a very big place in Flagstaff as kind of a hot spot for the city's nightlife. Um, and it became a very successful thing. It, it became the like social hub of the town. And that led to them thinking they should give it a better name, a little more kind of, uh, you know, eye, eye catchy name, you know? So they ran a contest. Um, I don't know the, the, the extent of the contest, like how many people submitted other names, anything like that. But the story goes that it was won by a 12 year old girl who named it the Monte Vista, uh, meaning like mountain view, you know? Okay. Um, and that led to this place being renamed. It has an iconic big, like old school sign that says Monte Vista that still is like kind of dominates the skyline in that area. It's kind of a cool looking building. If you, if you look it up. Um, how as but, a 12 year old are you not like winning that contest and just being like oh you want me to punch this up have an exciting name cool yeah welcome to the fucked up awesome crazy shit hotel i know like monta vista the, the fact that it like i could see a 12 year old coming up with mountain view because it's like oh i like to look at the mountains but the fact that it was Monte vista which is the like classed up gussied up version is so strange that this like I, it's one of those things where if it, if it really came from the 12 year old girl that's absolutely wild and good for her but it sounds like uh the like that came from talking with the parents you know <laughs> yeah okay that's fair yeah the parents intervened because she wanted to name it the fucked up crazy ass shit hotel yeah and like no 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 and they stepped in they're like how let, let's let's tell them this one honey yeah so uh this actually led to uh upon renaming this led to the the a local saying, meet me at the Monte V, which <laughs> became like a rallying cry for people going out uh, at night drinking and partying. And, and uh, so it became like a social hub um, as, as this place grew and, and became even more popular. Uh, it, it first made itself uh, a name for itself in show business when a woman named Mary Costigan was granted a commercial radio broadcasting license in 1927 uh, she was only the second woman in the world and the first in the U S to reach this, uh, to, to actually get a broadcasting license as a woman. And she moved into the Monte Vista hotel in one of the rooms and would do her broadcast out of there. Um, and the, the first time she broadcast it, more than 400 locals came in to attend her first show. And she would do a three hour radio broadcast from Monte Vista for like multiple years, which just kind of led to this being a place for people to hang out. Um, and then it uh, in the 40s and 50s, like I mentioned, um, as the rise of the Western took over Hollywood, uh, more than 100 movies were shot nearby in Sedona or Oak Creek Canyon. And oh, wow. uh, while those movies were filming, Various stars from these movies would then stay at the Hotel Monte Vista, meaning people like uh, Jane Russell, Gary Cooper, John Wayne, Bing Crosby, all these people stayed at the hotel at this time. And John Wayne was actually, as far as I can tell, maybe this is apocryphal, but he was the first person to report a ghostly sighting in the hotel in the late 1950s. I, I, I don't know if that man had any room in his brain for the paranormal. It was all filled up with racist thoughts. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say he's uh he look, he he does sometimes see ghosts, but they're fucking commies. So <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um I he, here's the thing, like he even his ghostly sighting, which I have a little bit more on later, he sees one of the ghosts that is now one of the like, you know, premier ghosts in, in mm, <laughs> the Monte Vista yeah. Hotel. Um but it, it was friendly stories. and it was like kind of nice. Yeah. Um so it you know, there wasn't he that one specifically wasn't a mean ghost. Uh, this this hotel has actually been featured in uh, two different movies that I can tell. Uh, the first being Casablanca. It's in there for a scene. And then also it showed up in the movie Forrest Gump. Okay. Um, well, so it's, well, it's what, a somewhat notable hotel. Do you have any idea like when in those movies, like what scenes those in those movies? Uh, 
in the Casablanca, it's that they shot a scene in the bar. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it, it's okay. one of the bar scenes. I don't know if it's like the the one or if it's one of the other ones. But uh, then I don't know what the Forrest Gump scene is. Okay, gotcha. So uh, then, you know, after that, that like th- this just stayed kind of a famous hotel and famous people would stay there. Uh, so other people who have who have had to spend some time at this hotel throughout the years are people such as Bob Hope, Clark Gable, Michael J. Fox, John Bon Jovi, who actually has a room named after him. Uh, Harry Truman supposedly frequented this hotel to the point where at some point he uh, liked the barber there so much that he flew all the way. Uh, he flew this barber all the way from uh, from the Monte Vista to another place nearby to give him a haircut. He just liked this guy wow. that much, I guess. OK, that must so be a th- damn this- good haircut. I know, like either that or this guy has to just be the best at conversation, and like, it, like, because I, I feel like half the thing with barbers is, is <laughs> their just bedside putting manner. you completely at ease. Yeah, this guy <laughs> just was like the nicest, most pleasant person, and Harry Truman was a president who was fucking like, you know, anxious to the gills. Like you probably have to be to be in that job, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's he, supposedly great barber. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so. The first big shift in the hotel came in the 1930s when Prohibition happened, uh, and all bars in and around Flagstaff were made to close. However, the Hotel Monte Vista had become known for its rowdiness and how, um, you know, booze was just flowing there. So it, they, they decided to start a speakeasy that was being, uh, that was fronted by that newspaper office. Uh, it was a speakeasy called just the Cocktail Lounge. And supposedly they didn't really do a good job of making it be a secret. It oh, was just very known and it didn't like, even though there, they, there were some, they took some steps, which we'll talk about here in a second. It was just like, it got shut down rel- not, not like immediately, but it didn't last all the way through prohibition. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. They, people find out that there's a place called the Cocktail Lounge, and they're like, "Oh, do you think they serve alcohol there?" So yeah, it's the the newspaper had a different name, but like they, I I wish I wish I could have found how the newspaper office was a front. All I know is uh, there's there the the next thing we're getting into is the fact that there are secret tunnels all underneath Flagstaff That's that that were uh, built by Chinese immigrants. Uh, after some stuff we'll talk about. Uh, and so a lot of the illegal stuff that came through the Hotel Monte Vista, along with various other places, took place in these shady tunnels. When I was a child, one of the top things that I wanted was a secret tunnel or a secret room uh, mm-hmm. that I could access and get to another place oh, secretly. The, the the secret door behind the bookcase is one of those like childhood things that I... I that, you see on TV and you're like, that is the coolest That's thing the I've coolest ever fucking thing I've seen. Ever seen. There's literally nothing in the world more cool than that. And I need one now. Yeah. 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 I, I a hundred percent agree with you. I, I, uh, as a kid, I wanted secret passageways. Like I, I never was a person that like dreamed of a house later on. And like, I don't have like a dream house, but it, the closest I ever got was just wanting secret passageways. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I kept hoping we would like, I would find one. <laughs> in the house one day and it just, it never, there never was one. No. And that's much cooler than my main requirement now, which is like a lot of room for shelves. Yeah. I want I want room for a lot of shelves for my shit. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, these things change. So the, the hotel's bar was eventually raided and shut down, uh, in 1931. And, uh, I I don't know if the newspaper office continued, if it like, uh, I didn't find anything on that. The, the story of this whole hotel, I can, uh, from what I can tell, from what I found online, is very. Um, it's been kind of streamlined and it's turned been. into like, yeah, exactly. Uh, it got turned into a good thing that fills about four paragraphs on their website. You know, like yeah. the story has been condensed, and it's all everyone kind of hits the same beats and talks about everything in the same. I didn't find like a good just historian laying out the full history of this hotel. I mainly found stuff that is people 
talking about this in 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 a way that is very kind of scripted and insane. It tends, tends to happen with haunted locations where like unless you're like an actual historical site, you know, it, it's hard to get a lot of information about exactly that thing at a haunt. It's always yeah. just like here's here's the hits, here's the ghosts. This is very much the uh, the way that I best way I can describe it is it feels like I'm getting the Hollywood version of the story on every website yeah, as opposed yeah. to like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the the uh, the the whole bar thing got shut down and they tried to make up for the revenue in another way by uh, bringing in slot machines. So it became mm. the first. Um, it's not a speakeasy if it's just gambling and not alcohol, but whatever you want to call it, a secret casino. Um, doing slot machines in Flagstaff, Arizona. It was supposedly was the only place in the town at the time because it was illegal uh, that had slot machines. And they would use the tunnels, especially here, to bring you know the actual slot machines in, bring people in and out to gamble. It became this kind of underground network thing. Um, now, these tunnels were built by Chinese immigrants, um, and they go all the way from uh, Northern Arizona University through uh, downtown Flagstaff uh, and includes places such as the Weatherford Hotel, Babbitt's Backcountry, and the Monte Vista. So all of these places have basement tunnels that are, they might be boarded up today, I don't know, but these tunnels, as far as I can tell, still exist. Um, and these tunnels were used, uh, were, were first built because in the early 1900s, there was a very large fire that damaged a lot of the buildings in downtown Flagstaff. And, you know, in the time period, they weren't super happy that there were a bunch of Chinese immigrants in the area, so they blamed the Chinese immigrants for these fires. Uh. Um, and that led to the... Uh, they, they claimed it because supposedly that's, you know, how they cook and clean. So they're, oh they're just weird. Like, it, it was a very racist thing. Yeah. And... <laughs> um. They so the Chinese built these tunnels or or found these tunnels. I don't know exactly where they came from, but I believe they were at least like finished by these Chinese migrant workers who um, used these tunnels to travel around town without getting harassed. So it was straight oh up my just God. the like it was their way to go to the places they needed to go and live without being uh, like you know uh, attacked. And then of course that became. All these tunnels started to become a place for, um, quote unquote, suspicious activity, such as opium dens, moonshine distilleries, uh, as well as places for gambling. So th this became basically the like kind of uh, uh, underground uh, sin den kind of tunnels in Flagstaff for a while. It's badass. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the, they got kind of taken over, much like a lot of other things. They got taken over by capitalism. So you have uh, this. So this is kind of the 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 uh, just how things were working at this time. It was a place that you would go to for your vices and for um, all all of that kind of stuff. It was very much a nightlife place. Um, it the ho hotel continued to be owned by the public until the 1960s when it was basically just not profitable enough and in such a state of disrepair that it was sold to a private investor who uh, then took over maintenance and everything. Um, and it continued to be, it's still open to this day. I think, I think it like kind of shut down for a couple of years, but it's, it's been pretty consistently open uh, throughout this whole time period. Uh, it was actually added to the national national register of historic places in 1973 so it's become like a historic landmark in a lot of ways to this town. Um, but the the there's one of the stories that is tied to one of the ghosts that uh, happened. It's kind of like the last historical story of this hotel. And that was at some point during the 1970s. There were three men who robbed a nearby uh, bank in Flagstaff. Um, and while this was while they were robbing the bank, one of them was shot uh, as they were trying to get away. They then tried to go and lie low and went wandered into the Monte Vista Lounge for a drink. Uh, however, the gunshot injury was so poor it, it it was this guy was really fucked up from being you know shot that he the the story goes that he died in the lounge before he could even finish his first drink. 
he he just bled out in this place. So now that man supposedly haunts the uh, the lounge of the Hotel Monte Vista. So that'll bring us into the ghosts. A couple sips of whiskey didn't fix him right up then, or no, Jeez. he didn't. He didn't take like part of a of a shot of whiskey and and instantly come back from the brink of death. Um, yeah, he supposedly. Uh, both staff and patrons have reported being greeted by a voice saying good morning um, in in the, the lounge where this man died. And they also report various uh, bar stools and drinks moving without anyone touching them and stuff. So that's the bank robber still supposedly haunts the, the bar there. <laughs> I love um, the bank robber to shot and killed uh, to ghost that says good morning pipeline. It, it, yeah. it makes perfect sense. It's it's weird that he just like that. It's just a ghost that says good morning because the guy was like they robbed the bank at night. This guy bled to death at night. So I don't know why he's greeting people in the morning. But, uh, you know, I don't understand ghost logic. It doesn't track for me. Maybe he maybe hmm, maybe it was really, really late when he died. And as his soul left his body, the sun was coming up. And uh, he was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, shit, it's the morning. Good morning, everybody. You know, good, great morning to not be dead. Uh, mm-hmm. having, happy to be alive. Happy to be alive here in the uh, here in the lounge. And uh, what's this? I can float now. Well, that's interesting. Anyways. Yeah. What's why is my body still down one, there? I should not. Yeah. One cup of coffee, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a morning ghost, the least you could do is turn the coffee on like. Just get that going Ooh. before people show up, you know? If I could get a ghost, if somebody were to... <laughs> if somebody died in my household and haunted it, the least they could do is is brew me a cup in the morning, you know? Yeah. Um. So let, let's get into some of the other hauntings of this place because there's, there's, there's all sorts. Let's start with the general. Um, generally, there's a bunch of people experience a bunch of weird shit, such as phantom footsteps following guests down the hallways, uh, various disembodied voices whispering in the ears of bar patrons, um, and spirits are known to move furniture around in empty rooms and will sometimes make sudden appearances, ring the lobby telephone, or even knock various things down or off shelves. Um, Both employees and guests have heard band music coming from the second floor lobby when no band was playing. And uh, supposedly stuff like this is just so common that the staff, it's more of like a joke than an actual scary thing for the staff. It's just like part of part of working there, supposedly to the point where, okay, this is just a thing that I think is funny for like the, I I guess the, like uh, the ways to make money off of ghosts, because this, this hotel does not like on their website, it lists the the ghosts and stuff and has some of this information but they don't offer any ghost tour or any like guided anything but they do on their website say but you can ask our staff about their experiences so basically they're saying we won't like do a ghost tour but we do want you to harass our staff Mm. and I, i that's that's like a weird line for because you would think they if they're going to make the part of this hotel being the most haunted place, you would have like a fucking gift shop and the ghost tour and all these things. But no, it just is like, a, a just, Hey, go ahead and annoy our staff with questions about ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Usually you want to capitalize on being a haunted location in that way, but I, I don't know. May, maybe I don't, do you have any idea who, who like currently owns it? Uh, it's 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 owned by like the uh, it's private ownership. I don't know who it okay, is, but okay. I I am curious if if it is in part because like, you know, it's a successful enough hotel without trying to do that in a way that makes it feel low rent. You know, because yeah. if you if if you're not there expecting ghosts and you just think it's a nice hotel and you walk in and there's like ghost shit everywhere, that's true. It's yeah. fun to be a curiosity. It's it looks like a theme park attraction if you start having like tours and stuff. Yeah. So also, you know, the staff is already putting up with the annoyances of the ghosts themselves. Like they're knocking true. shit off. Sh- ghosts share a surprising amount of a Venn diagram with cats. I'm realizing. Yeah. It's like if cats could move bigger objects yeah, and like go through walls and play in like yeah. invisible ghostly instruments. 
Yeah, so really the only way it's like cats is the fact that it knocks stuff well, off. they're making the like abrupt sudden noises and the movement yeah, around okay. and knocking shit over. Yeah, that's cat cat stuff. I, I can I can see where you're coming from with that. Um so let, let's uh let's talk a little bit about the the various ghosts the the ghosties of this hotel. So the first one doesn't it is one of the only ones that doesn't have a name and this is this one's weird because I kind of put this together from like three different sources and no one like lists it fully together. Um so this one is this one is kind of a okay. So most places will list the fact that there is a shadowy male figure that appears near the basement. Um but then other places said that it looked like or it it came off like a um kind of uh Italian mobster guy like they they said it was like the ghost of of a of, of a mafia member who died around this hotel but they no one ever fully like fleshed that out so basically there is a um a tall menacing shadowy male figure that sometimes appears near the basement or even in the basement that basically scares the piss out of delivery workers um, just people like dropping off stuff at the hotel because and, and like it just appears randomly scares people and disappears. There's not much else to it, uh, but sometimes it will make like noises and call out names and stuff, I think. Um, but there's not a lot to that one. But one of the most famous ones is known as the Meat Man. Oh, oh no. You, if you want to see them, if you want to deal with the Meat Man ghost, you got to <laughs> ask for room 220. Okay. Because that's the meat man's room. I don't want to deal so, with the meat man ghost. I don't. I, I don't want to. Okay, then then I'll get you into the Bon Jovi room, which we'll talk about in a little bit okay. here. But for for the meat man, this was a supposed longtime uh, boarder in the late or sorry, the early 1980s, who would just stay in this room for long periods of time and would just hang raw meat from the chandelier. Uh, and then at one point he was like, ha- they hadn't seen him coming in or out of his, his room for multiple days. And they went into the room and, uh, f- was, he was found there having died three previous, three days previous. So he just died in this hotel. Um, and they of course then had to come in and clean up the room and do all that kind of stuff. Even do some maintenance. Cause this guy had been there for a while and a maintenance worker was in working on some repairs, uh, when he went to go get a new fixture for some, like something, one of the lights in the room or something, he uh, left the room, turned all the lights off and locked the door. And when he came back and had to unlock the door, the door was still locked and everything. He opened the door to find the television was on at full volume. The linens were on the bed that were on the bed had been ripped and thrown all the way around the room. So it, the room was just fucking trashed after him being gone for only a couple minutes. Uh, so supposedly still to this day, uh, guests will have uh, reports of the TV randomly turning on on its own accord, along with what they re- report as cold male hands touching guests in their sleep. Mm. Now, what's the meat thing all about? I could not find that out. <laughs> okay. It, 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 this is just one of those stories that is fully formed and you only ever see it in this one way. Uh, but it was a guy with a strange habit of hanging raw meat on a chandelier. Now, by the time staff is aware that this is a habit that he has, you'd think they would have intervened and been like, please stop hanging meat on our chandeliers, sir. Um, Yeah, you would think so, right? And maybe he was like, you don't get it. This is like a sexual thing for me. This is the only thing I've got. And they, you know, he just kept doing it. I, I don't know. It's a... I don't know. That's that's an interesting new. That's an interesting new type of go- new type of ghost. Just ghost guy just dropped. So yeah, uh, very unexpected little twist into the ghosty here. <laughs> uh, and I, I like that the the ghost itself has nothing to do with meat. He just his in life. This guy was such a fucking weird dude that even in his ghostly form, with all of con- all the context is missing now, he still is known as the meat man. What a legacy, honestly. Yeah. So n- next is the rocking chair, which is in room 305. This is probably the most famous thing in this story. Like, 
in, in the Hotel Monte Vista, this is the one that get that shows up the most on like paranormal shows. And if you look online at at, at P- paranormal researchers and stuff, a lot of them try to get this room to look at this rocking chair um, because it's supposedly also the most active room in the entire hotel spiritually, you know? Yeah, I got you. So uh, there's this this rocking chair that sits near the window in this room. And supposedly people have reported seeing the chair move by itself along with knocking coming from inside a nearby closet. But also sometimes not only does the chair move, but people will see the apparition of an old woman in the rocking chair. Um, Supposedly this was an elderly woman who is a long term renter in this room who would just sit by the window for hours on end looking out the window because she basically had nothing else. So she was just a fixture at some point living in this room, rocking in the window, and now people still see her. Now, the f- the other funny bit about this, well, the only real funny bit about this, is that room 305 now seems to be the John Bon Jovi room. So if you want the rocking chair room, uh, get the John Bon Jovi room. Okay. Supposedly he stayed there. Is I don't he know dead? if him staying there. No. Okay. Uh, he, he is still active and I think still putting out music oh, at least geez. touring that's um unfortunate but he he has been uh, a patron of this hotel before i don't know if multiple times like i i don't know the threshold for this place naming a room after somebody because i think they have like they have uh named quite a few of these rooms after celebrities who have passed through the hotel like i think truman has a room i like uh there's another one who was a writer of western novels that a lot of the movies and stuff were based on that frequented the area named the zane gray room um but uh yeah it it's it, john bon jovi has his own room has a plaque and everything with a photo of him and stuff mm. it's uh yeah i don't i don't think i actually want to stay in that room honestly i yeah. i don't need a plaque that, of john bon jovi looking at me while i'm trying to sleep and there's ghosts on top of that, I, I, I yeah. think I'm good. Okay, Kyle, let, let's take you from room 305 then, since you don't want to be in there. Well, let's take you into room 306. Well, is there anything interesting going on in that room? Like, does the ghost of John, the living John Bon Jovi show up and play some mediocre rock music or what? No, you just get, but that's the rocking, like the rocking chair ghost is in John Bon Jovi. Oh, room, I so. see. I see. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to go next door or I guess across the hall. How is how this would normally work? So we're going to go to room 306, which is uh, known and, and talked about as the the woman of the night room. So this is one of the few cases where the ghost is not someone who just like died of natural causes or died of like whatever. This was an actual murder. So, um, in like the 1940s was when this took place. Uh, this the, the hotel was near Flagstaff's red light district at the time. Um, and two female sex workers were working their shift in this area. And they picked up a man who happened to be staying in room 306 of the Monte Vista Hotel. And he wanted to, you know, frequent their, their company. And so the two women went back to him with to his room. And, uh, at some point during their visit, um, the two women were brutally murdered and dumped out of the third floor window to the street below. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, and this is, has led to the ghosts of these women haunting this room and various guests throughout the years have been awakened in the middle of the night and were unable to return to sleep due to a feeling that they were being watched. And uh, specifically male guests report the feelings of having hands placed over their mouths and throats and waking up unable to breathe. So these these ghosts, if you want, if you look, if you want to live dangerously or if you just want to be protected uh, and you're not of, of, of a male presenting form, you can maybe be protected by two ghosts that are going to come after any man in your room. Um, it, by taking in room 306. At the Sorry, Hotel. that's confusing to me because does this imply that the ghost that murdered two women is... The ghosts are of the women. Oh, the ghosts are of the women. Oh, right. Yeah, no, that, no, makes, the ones that, died. that makes so yeah. much more sense than yeah. the way my brain... 
<laughs> Look, it, it's it's okay. Uh, it's part. It's all part of the story. Um, okay. Yes, the, okay. The, the the ghosts are of the are of the murdered uh, women who now uh, seemingly try to suffocate I'm, men. Uh, who oh stay my god! In room my brain. Places. I was literally just like, well, the murder probably died at some point. So like, yes. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm, that make, at least that I'm assuming sense. so. That makes a lot more yeah. sense. I guess. I guess that if this took place in the 1940s, no, they couldn't still like they would have had to have been so young to still be alive at that point. So yeah. not 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 at like murdering age <laughs> with prostitutes. Um, that that would be a different uh, kind of. Uh, I don't think they would still be alive. So um, now we get to the ghost that is maybe the second most famous one, and that's because it's uh, the one that John Wayne saw. So that is the Phantom Bellboy. Um, uh, most guests will have experiences with this ghost around outside of room 210, which is now known as the Zane Gray Room, who was a writer who wrote a lot of like westerns and stuff at the time period. Um, and they will report hearing a knock at their door and a muffled voice saying room service. And when they open the door, no one is there. Uh, however, some people have reported seeing the figure of a bellboy standing outside of the room when they open it. So like, this is another one where sometimes you get an apparition and sometimes you just get the voice. Um, however, John Wayne was a person that supposedly saw the full blown ghost and talked like heard it and everything. And he reported that the ghost seemed friendly and he wasn't threatened by its presence. It seemed to be perfectly, uh, fine and not, not threatening in any real way. Um, they, other, other various housekeepers have, Told that the bellboy is sometimes seen in uniform just walking up and down the halls, either sometimes carrying like fucking trays of, you know, hotel trays and stuff like in various states of bellboy stuff. Um, so it's still seen walking around the halls to this day. There are, let's see, like a couple more. None of them are super long. Th this one is just kind of sad. Uh, there's, Supposedly there's just like uh, phantom cries of an infant that come from the basement. Um, they like to the point where they're so incessant that staff have like sometimes had to just like run away because you're just hearing constant baby crying in the basement. Um, no one has ever like seen a ghost baby, but like crying in the basement is a pretty regular thing, I guess. Um, that would be a uh, pretty fucking spooky. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I could like, I don't know what the single, like if, if only if a ghost could only make one sound what would be the most disconcerting, but baby crying would probably be up there. Yeah. It'd be towards the top of the list. Yeah. Uh, now, now it, it's creepy, but like, you know, you say it's a sad one and I'm, I'm here to say maybe, Maybe we need to rethink our posture on okay. baby ghosts. Is it that sad? Is it, you know, uh, uh, make your? I, I need you to make your case why it's not because I think I'm standing on the side of history on I mean, this one. <laughs> I mean, like the baby wasn't, you know, it, it was a baby, so it didn't know that it didn't have, didn't get a chance at life. So now it just gets to be a baby forever as a ghost, and okay. it's fine. Um, and uh, although I guess being trapped as a baby in spirit form, uh, and, and just not being able to make sense of the world is also pretty, pretty horrible. Uh, yeah. And, and might lead to you just crying incessantly. All right. in a, I changed in a my mind. It is sad. Look, I, I appreciate the effort to try to like <laughs> bring, bring us up out of the, the sad nosedive. <laughs> I, I appreciate the effort. But I don't think I can. I don't yeah, think I fair, can. Yeah, yes yeah, and the, the idea that look, you know me. <laughs> a, a I'm baby always ghost isn't. Sad. I'm always trying to be the devil's advocate. You know me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's look. That's that's <laughs> the first thing you know about Kyle is that he's he's a big old devil. You, you're hanging out with us for the first time at like a, a social Frequent gathering. Frequent user of Godwin's law. Yeah, and, then they, and people. The first thing people will notice about me they're like, oh, okay, this is the devil's advocate guy. Got yeah. it. Um, so th there are a couple more here. Uh, one is a ghastly elevator attendant. It, th this, and this is inside of the, 
one of the first self-service elevators in the state of Arizona. So we've got another kind of historical thing. Okay. Um, the supposedly when guests will enter this this uh, elevator, even though now it's been redone and, and isn't is missing a lot of the original you know pieces and stuff, it's a more modern elevator. Uh, but there will be a faint voice that just asks which floor whenever you go into the elevator. Um, and there's also been some sightings of a phantom hand closing, closing the gate of the elevator um, with even a reflection in the kind of mirrored surface of the interior of the elevator showing a man standing behind them by the buttons. Um, so people just basically say, you know, just kind of keep just look towards the front of the elevator and just don't look around when you're in it. Just uh, ignore it, you know, because it's, it's, it's not trying to hurt you. It just uh, it's is, just is trying to get out. places. Yeah, uh, there also is a dancing couple that sometimes will pe- people will see in in the room that was the cocktail lounge. They're seen in a formal dress, uh, dancing, laughing, and smiling. Um, so a lot of really, this place has a pretty good ratio of happy to sad ghosts. You know, like there are a couple sad and angry ones, but most of them are just kind of like employees, <laughs> just you know? chilling. Yeah. Just people that hung out but there. Even the one that had like a tra- like I guess tragic death of being shot and killed as in the middle of a robbery, like all they gotta do, all they do is say good morning. So like, yeah, they seem to be doing fine. So so really, it just comes down to uh, the the women of the night yeah. are the ones that yeah, that's pretty terrible. And you really only have to look out for them if if you're uh, if you're if you're male. So yeah, um, the last one is just known as spirit of a small boy. Um, so there's supposedly a small boy who plays in the halls of the Monte Vista hotel. He will sometimes walk behind guests or staff, sometimes talking, sometimes not. Sometimes he's calling for his mother and occasionally he'll even touch people on the hand as if he's like a boy reaching for the hand of his parent. And a lot of times he, this spirit will appear mainly to children in kind of a looking for someone to play with kind of thing. Now, I don't know if the kid agrees to it, if they're locked into being a ghost for all eternity. I don't know if we go with that logic in, in this one. Um, but that, you know, that's that is that's a, the main rundown of the various ghosts of the Monte Vista Hotel. OK. All right. Yeah, that's a pretty good grab bag of ghosts. Nothing, nothing too. You know, I, I think of some of the ghosts that I've covered in the past, like um, there was like that one in the cemetery that just hurts you. It, the, I think it was like a cemetery yeah. in England and there's just a ghost that wants to hurt people. There's uh there's the jerking gorilla. <laughs> yeah, which is m- more um, alarming than scary, I guess. Um, and, you know, I've covered yeah. a lot of poltergeists, but. Yeah, these 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 ghosts just generally seem pretty chill. I just I guess I gotta steer clear of the room with the the, the two murdered women. Um, yeah, just just don't get room three hundred six. Yeah, uh, and you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, this is much more in the like Queen Mary side of things, where just like a bunch of ghosts of people who've died. Like it it's not um, like there's a huge tragic story in here. Well, it's it's um, a little surprising yeah. because usually ghost stories are backed up by like oh they they died violently and horribly and now they're back because they have unfinished business or they're, they have their venge, they're vengeful, you know? Uh, so th- this is, this is an interesting change of pace. Yeah. Uh, there also was a, a movie in 2021 called a haunting at the Monte Vista, which seems to be kind of a amateur paranormal investigation documentary type thing. It's only like 80 minutes and you can buy it on prime for like five bucks. Uh, I didn't, so I I didn't watch it. Um, but it does exist. I think they also focus mostly on the rocking chair while probably also doing some other stuff, but that's, you know, um, so yeah, I always just like to see what has been done. Like this has appeared on your paranormal shows. They places, the discovery channel and stuff. I've been to this, this place, uh, but that's the only movie that I know of. So without further ado, do you want to do a big question? I am down with a big question. All right. So, Kyle. Yes. If you were to take a road trip down Route 66 mm. and you had to take one of these ghosts with you as your co-pilot, which one would you take and where do you want to go? Um, hmm. What's, I, I mean, I, I guess... Um, Probably the bellboy. 
You know, we have testimonial yeah. from John Wayne that it's it's a friendly entity. Um, you know, it's not going to try and like strangle me or, or or cover my mouth, and it's not going to be a crying baby, and it's not going to you know rock in its seat the whole drive. So, I, I think I just take the bellboy and I just will tour all the different hotels and be like, see, this is what you're missing. Um, as yeah, a professional bellboy, here's all the cool hotels that could have been a part of your career if you hadn't died, which is tragic, but you know, now I get to take you and show you around. So yeah, I, I guess I, <laughs> I guess I would, I would give the, the, the uh, bellboy, a, 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 a hotel tour. Show them, show them. Okay. Yeah. Show them. Take them to the great hotels of the U S. Yeah, exa- you know? yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I'm going to take a bit of a different trip. Tr- Tact here. Oh boy. Um, okay. I, I'm taking that that like mafia man from the basement. Oh Jesus. Okay. And I'm taking him on a road trip to a New York bodega, and I'm just gonna okay. see like what he orders. <laughs> All right. I, I want to see what this like mafia man ghost from the the bowels of Flagstaff, Arizona. What what is his like order at the fucking bodega? Look, you I, know, I respect what you want to the information you're hoping to glean from this ghost. But I would also like to point out to you that once you have that, that, that mafia connect, you're cut, you're in Mm -hmm. dude. Like, Oh, you think, are you saying I'm a made man now? Well, I don't know. Made man's a strong term. You're, you're like an Artie Bucco where like, you know, uh, shit is revolving around you, but you're wrapped up in it and you know, you can't really, you know, like I, I'm just I'm just saying I'm worried for your safety at this point if you get involved in the ghost mafia, because like See, I'm just just steer clear. I'm not looking to get actually involved with the mafia, although I do understand your concerns and that might be the the end the where this ends up. But I think I would hope that me introducing this like 1920s guy to the world of a modern like sub with grabbing some chips from the convenience aisle to put on top of said sub would like blow their mind enough that I would just then to go on, go on my merry well, first way. First of all, their minds already probably been blown since they're dead. Um, or true, but he, here's, call. and here's the thing though. You take, you take a mafia member on a cross country mm-hmm. trip for a New York snack. Mm-hmm. And I get it. You see that as just a casual, like, you know, I'm doing like a nice thing for this ghost. Maybe the mafia doesn't see it that way. Maybe the mafia sees it True. as, oh, so you want, you're, you're, you're in on this, huh? What you doing palling around with our, our mafia guy, huh? What, what's, what's this all about? And they think you're trying to get too close and either okay. they, they get rid of you or they forcibly bring you into the circle. But look, look at it this way. Okay. What if the you know how ghosts are dispelled once you complete the unfinished business you have on Earth? That's what if the unfinished business of this mafia member was just like not having the fucking perfect bite in their life? Because I think that if if we can get this thing to be to to just like have modern like TikTok viral level sand, sandwich, I think we could really change this person's life and also free them from the immortal tor- torment of being a ghost stuck on this earth. Okay. That's, I, I'm just I, saying, I, get, I think a chopped cheese would do that. <laughs> okay. I, I like your idea. I'm just, you know, who knows how many other ghostly mafia members would catch wind of your little, your little, uh, good Samaritan act, you know? Um, so yeah, just be it, careful. It, look, I'll take that. I'll, I will take that, that, take that opportunity. I will take that, that risk. Um, and I'm going to change this motherfucker's life. Excellent. Did you know Sfachim okay. means come, I think? Uh, I did not. Yeah. Yeah, there's a part where I'm, uh, oh, shit. What's the, the guy who comes over from Italy that wants to uh, uh, wants to make sweet love to Mrs. Soprano? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't remember his name. It's been he, a while. <laughs> I think he says he, like, steps on something and, like, he, like, slips or something, and he goes, ah, Sfachim, and... I found out that means come. I'm pretty. He's if just I saying, remember, oh, come. Oh, yeah, like, that's yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he's using it as a um, expletive, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, that's a good one that I picked up. You know, there's some other ones in there that I probably <laughs> shouldn't say, but you know, if you want to yeah. learn some fun Italian uh, terms, that's a great show to watch. It's just a great show to watch in general. But yeah, I was gonna say there's probably other reasons to watch. Oh yeah, just wanting to learn Italian swear words, but. 
I, you know, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, uh, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and take care of some business. Sounds good. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter at IGW Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook.com slash It Gets Weird Podcast. And we're on all your favorite podcatchers from Stitcher to Google Play to Apple Podcasts to Spotify. If you listen to podcasts somewhere, look up It Gets Weird and we're probably there. Twitch.tv slash It Gets Weird. I'm promoting it and yet I'm about to go on a fucking two-week work trip. Uh, so I'll I'll get back to streaming again sometime soon. But this is... <laughs> Just look, just give us a follow on there because we're worth watching when we do go live for a stream. Uh, email us at podcast at gmail.com. Which famous mafia ghost would you love to take to get a bodega stack? Tell us now. Uh, yeah. Patreon.com slash it gets weird. We have a $2 tier and a $5 tier. At the $2 tier, you get access to the show It Gets Weird TV, which comes out every other week where right now we're in the final two episodes of so, X Files yeah. season one, uh, and we we t- we talk about the episode, we discuss stuff around it. Sometimes we discuss other things. Uh, it's a good time. So that's at the two dollar level. Then at the five dollar level, you get access to It Gets Weird TV plus another bonus show that comes out in the off weeks of It Gets Weird TV. Sometimes it's an, an episode I'm doing. Sometimes it's an episode Niles doing. Sometimes we've got your movie. Sometimes Jules is there. There's all kinds of stuff at that level. Uh, and that comes out in the off weeks. So you're getting bonus content every single week at the five dollar tier. Whether you donate to the $2 tier or the $5 tier, you get access to the main show two days early on Friday instead of Sunday. And you get access to the Discord where we're hanging out, chatting about all kinds of stuff. Uh, Lots of UFO and conspiracy and ghost and cryptid talk in there. Now, if you don't get an invite on the Patreon, shoot us a message through Patreon and say, hey, I'm donating. Uh, Can I get an invite to the Patreon? discord and i'll help you out so please if if you don't get that invite automatically let me know through patreon and then of course we have a one dollar tier where you don't get anything out of it you're just saying hey i like your show here's a buck here's a tip thanks for doing what you do uh and if you can't donate please tell your friends tell your enemies tell your congressmen all about it gets weird podcast all right thank you all for listening and supporting the show this has been it gets weird and i've been nile and i'm kyle signing out peace